Hello, pre-calc kids. Welcome back to another lesson in AP Pre-Calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to finish up our lesson on the composition of functions. So in this lesson, we're going to first look at how to actually come up with the function analytically. Like, what is it? Not just plugging in numbers, but what is the actual function? So when we do this, when we're looking at um, this first problem, find the function h of x if it equals this composed function f of g of x. So g of x is going to get plugged in to f of x. So we're looking at taking this thing here, that's g of x, and we plug it into every instance of x. Well, the f of x only has one variable x in this case, so it's kind of a simple one. So all we do is we say f of g of x is going to equal, oops, one more parenthesis, is going to equal, there's my instance of x where it's being squared minus one, and what gets plugged in there? g of x does. So it is the square root of x. And then that simplifies to x minus one. And then that's it. That is your f of g of x. Now here's another example where again, we're gonna take g of x, so that's getting plugged in. This here is our g of x. It's going to get plugged into every instance of x. So there's an x here and an x here. So it gets plugged into two places. So my f of g of x is going to equal, so I'm gonna do this just to set this up. So I've set up my two parentheses here just to represent the place of these two x's. So the entire x plus one replaces those x's. So this here is going to be the x plus one, and this again is going to be x plus one. This time it's quantity squared. Okay, so now what do we get here? Distribute the two minus, now what is this? x plus one quantity squared? Please, please, please don't say that it's x squared plus one. That is not what this is, okay? Some of you are like, oops, I, uh, I thought it was. It's not. What it means is x plus one times x plus one. So just remember that, except that I'm getting sloppy. That's supposed to be a one. Uh, so if you distribute this through, distribute, distribute, or if, you, if some of your teachers might call it FOIL, however you want to do that, it would then become x squared plus two x plus one. And then you distribute that minus, simplify, combine like terms, and you end up with negative x squared plus one. The two x terms end up canceling here. So that is my function. Okay, so composed function there. All right, now that's just composing the functions, having the, your new rule set up. But what about the domain of these things? That's a little bit trickier. When we find the domain of a composed function, there's a couple things we have to check. There's two restrictions that we're gonna to have to consider when we have f of g of x. The first thing is, since we're using g of x as the input here, right? That g of x is being plugged in to the function f, then we can only use x values that are in the domain of g. So if the function g has a restriction, we can only use x values that, are, that fit that re restriction. Okay, you'll see here, I'm gonna give you some examples, you'll see what I mean. And then secondly, the output of g, now think about this, the output of g is going to be plugged into f. So the output of g must be in the domain of f. Okay, now that's a little trickier to, to, to just visualize and see. So what we do to check this, we're just gonna look at this new function that we create and any restrictions on the domain of that new function, those, those, we've gotta also include those restrictions on the domain that we have. All right, so let's, let's go back to number one where we're working with, on number one we have this problem, right? h of x equals x minus one. Does this thing have any restrictions? Okay, that would be looking at number two, right? Number two, we're just looking at the uh, at f of g of x. Does that thing have any restrictions? No, x minus one is just a line, right? There's no restrictions there. When I mean restrictions, it's like, is there a square root where that square root can't be negative? Is there a fraction like one over x where the, the denominator cannot be zero? That would be restrictions on the domain. And, uh, and that problem doesn't have anything, right? Well, let's look again at what f and g were. This was f and this was g. And since we were doing f of g of x, and we were having g of x be the one that we plugged in, then that means we have to consider the restrictions on g of x. And in this case, x has to be greater than or equal to zero. You cannot have a negative underneath that radical. Therefore, even though this function here is x minus one, you'd think you can plug in anything, but you're not allowed to. You cannot plug in a negative number because that would create problems for g of x, and g of x was used as the input. Okay, so there's two layers to this. It's g, what is the restrictions on g of x, and then what is the restrictions on h of x. So this would be the domain of h of x. You also might write it with the interval notation where you go bracket, zero, comma, infinity, parenthesis. Those are the same thing. Okay, either way would be fine. You might see both those types of answers on the, on the solutions guide. All right, let's do some problems like that then. Two quick problems. 
So the first one is, uh, let's find f of g. So remember, f of g means the g is getting plugged in. It's f of g of x. So we're going to take x squared minus 8, plug it into that x right there. So that x becomes x squared minus 8, and then minus 1. And then we can simplify that down to x squared minus 9. Please do not think that this means x minus 3. It does not simplify to x minus 3. Do not do that. Some of you, again, were like, oops, I thought that's what it was. It's not. Okay, you can't simplify that. That is it. So now, if that's what this new f of g of x function is, what is the domain? So the first thing is we check the domain of the function that got plugged in. The function that got plugged in was g of x. That's the input function. Does this thing have a restriction? No. We can use any x value we want. So that one's all real numbers for g of x. And then what about the, the original, right? So here's finding the f of g. That's f of g. But what about the domain? The domain ha means that we can't have x squared minus 9. That thing cannot be negative. Or in other words, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, when you solve this, you get x squared is greater than or equal to 9. All right, now what now? Uh, remember when, if we take the square root, you'll end up with x if this just said equals, don't write this down. If this just said equals, we get x equals plus or minus 3, right? x equals a positive 3 or a negative 3. Well, that's not equals. It's plus or minus. Excuse me, it's uh, greater than or equal to. So think through that then. What values would make this greater than 9? As long as we square that. So if I did anything that's bigger than 3, so anything that's greater than or equal to 3 would work, right? That's going to be squared 9. And the other one would be anything that's less than or equal to negative 3 that would also work. So the domain restriction here, the domain is all values that are less than negative 3 and greater than positive 3. And if we were using interval notation, it would look like this. There we go. That would be the interval notation if you're using it that way. All right, so now let's do it the other way. What if we start with uh, f of x and we're going to plug that into g? Well, so in that case, this is the input. So g of f of x is going to equal, now it's going to be x squared minus 8. So something squared minus 8. And that something that's getting plugged in is the function f. So it's the square root of x minus 1. That simplifies down to just x minus 1 minus 8. The square root and the squared cancel. And then you just get x minus 9. All right, so x minus 9 is the new function that we have, our composed function. But what's the restriction on the domain? There are no restrictions on the domain from this, so that's easy enough. But then you check what you plugged in. In this case, g is not what we plugged in. We plugged in f. So the input function was an f. Therefore, we have to take the restriction on the domain of f, which in this case would be that x minus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. It cannot be negative. So then x is greater than or equal to 1. That is the domain. I can even write that down here, with, like with a d. That's the domain there. Or if you wanted to use interval notation, it would be bracket 1 to infinity. Either way works. All right, so that is it for the domain portion. Now, the last one, uh, the last type of questions, these are pretty easy. It's called decomposing. Decomposing is just recognizing that sometimes complicated functions can be broken down into uh, less complex functions and just looking at the pieces of them, what's inside of the other one. So here we have the g of x would be on the inside. So what's on the inside of this? It's just x cubed plus 1. That's what's on the inside. So then what would be left over? That x cubed plus 1 gets replaced with x. That's how we do the quote-unquote outside function. So f of x would just be the square root of x. Okay, so the inside was x cubed plus 1, and then that gets replaced with x for the outside function. All right, so then on this one, let's try this one. What would be on the inside? This denominator here. That's what's on the inside. So it's just an x squared plus 1. And then that x squared plus 1 gets replaced by x. So if we go up here, it would be 1 over x. Okay, what you're not allowed to do to make these less complex, you're not allowed to use the, the identity function. Remember the identity function where it's f of x equals x? Okay, that would be kind of dumb. If you just say one of the functions is x, then the other function is just the same thing. Like you don't change anything. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense to get it, making it less complex. Okay, so don't do that. Don't use the identity function for, for these. Actually, decompose it with using different functions. All right, that's it. This is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that master check, and I'll see you back in our next lesson.